In the 1980s, superhero movies were basically still a non-factor in Hollywood. Superman 2 and Batman 89 were kind of the outliers, but pretty much everything in between was a massive and misjudged disappointment. However, canon films hope to have their own outlier, with a movie based on Marvel's most iconic character, Spider-Man. They would hire Joseph Zito to direct their movie in 1986. So, what if it happened? Canon Films made the decision to fire Ted Newsom and John Brancato from the Spider-Man movie, Joseph Zito would remain on board to direct. Zito was a huge fan of Spider-Man, and he took his newfound position very seriously. The movie would have been written by Barney Cohen, who had worked with Zito before on Friday the 13th, the final chapter. Now, Zito, himself a New York native, envisioned a very dark New York City that would be cold and unforgiving, but would regain its optimism thanks to Spider-Man, who's more vibrant and inspirational than the things around them. Now, this movie, as you probably could have guessed, would have been the origin story of Spider-Man, and would have featured promotional stuntman Scott Leva in the title role. Zito hoped to use Doc Ock as the main antagonist, with Bob Hoskins reportedly in mind for the part. However, Cannon would shoot him down, believing that Doc Ock was far too expensive to bring to the big screen. Cannon would only continue to intervene and try to get Zito to make a movie-exclusive villain called the Night Ghoul that would have been a scientist that turns himself into a humanoid bat creature, aka the biggest man-bat ripoff ever, am I right? However, Stan Lee ultimately shot down the idea, and they seemingly settled on the lizard being the main villain instead. Zito hoped to cast either Catherine Hepburn or Lauren Bacall in the role of Aunt May, while Stan Lee himself was eyeing the role of J. Jonah Jameson. It seemed like a certainty that this movie would happen, as the script was settled, a budget of $20 million was approved of, sets were built, and promotional commercials and advertisements were already making their way to the general public. However, the movie ended up being seriously stripped of its budget. You see, in 1987, when filming was supposed to begin, Cannon would release two other would-be blockbusters, Masters of the Universe and Superman IV The Quest for Peace. However, both movies absolutely tanked with both critics and audiences. So now Cannon weren't exactly feeling like throwing around $20 million on a movie that might not reach their expectations. I mean, if Superman can fail, then why shouldn't Spider-Man? So they would slash Zito's budget from $20 million to just $7 million. Zito is now feeling uncomfortable with making such a huge movie on such a pathetic budget, and he decided to leave the project altogether in the fall of 1987. So I'm going to be frank here. I don't think that this would have been a good movie at all. All right. Like I've said in the past, I know this is going to sound hypocritical because in the past, I've said that budgets don't make a movie. Okay. You can have a movie with really terrible costumes, really terrible animation or CGI, and it won't matter to me if the story and the cast are good. But honestly, I don't think that would help. Like, I don't even think those things would have made canon film Spider-Man movie good. At least not at this point. The previous version, uh, you know, John Brancato's version and Ted Newsom's version, that movie I think could have been good despite the budget. But this one would have had the budget so low that I don't think they could have convincingly done it. Like, I just don't think that would have happened. And I don't think it. I don't even think it would have been that successful because, I mean, yeah, it's Spider-Man, but canon films had a reputation, and I'm not gonna a lie, I wasn't around in the 80s, I wasn't born until the 2000s, but like, I'm pretty sure that, you know, people in the 80s knew better than to go see most of canon's movies, so I'm pretty sure that even Spider-Man would have failed, as I said, I mean, Superman failed, but if, that is a little bit because the brand was tainted, I mean, Su uh, Superman 3 wasn't that good, and then Supergirl definitely wasn't very good at all, but I do think the fact that they were, that it was made by canon was a contributing factor to why Superman 4 was a failure, so it's hard for me to say that Spider-Man definitely wouldn't have the same thing happen to it. Um, 
you know, and this, there's also the fact that Golan and Globus, the guys that ran canon, didn't understand Spider-Man. I mean, their first instinct when they heard Spider-Man was to make it like a werewolf creature feature directed by Toby Hooper, which I talked about before. And that would have been stupid. And they continued to interfere, even though they knew nothing about the character. Uh, they would disregard, you know, suggestions from their writers, their directors, and Stanley himself. Uh, and just tried to do whatever they want. Like, Stan Lee really had to try and get properly involved to stop these bad things from happening. But I don't think he could have stopped everything. And I, I, I can tell that Joseph Zito wanted to do good by Spider-Man. But, you know, the guy's track record, it doesn't lie. The guy never directed a good movie up to that point. Um, and I know he was passionate. But combined with, you know, constant studio interference, a really low budget, and a director with no guarantee of success, I mean, it's hard for me to say I, if I think it would be good or not i think that the lizard probably would have looked really terrible um spider-man probably would have looked okay i imagine his costume would have been okay uh if scott leave his promotional materials anything to go off of i may uh, i mean um but you know and it does sound like they had good cast members in mind but i don't know if they would have been able to afford them like i can't imagine them affording katherine hepburn or even bob hoskins because bob hoskins was kind of on fire in the 80s so i don't even know if they could have afforded him um <laughs> so there's a lot of x factors there's a lot of things i don't know for sure and you know because i don't know the story of this movie all i know is the factors that went into making it and some of the things they wanted to include and by that alone I can say wholeheartedly, I don't think this would have been very good. I think that the, if they had done the one before this, you know, the John Brancato and Ted Newsom one, it would have been good. I think that movie could have been really great. This movie, though, it's just there's too many questions. It raises too many questions. And I'm sorry. I'm just not comfortable saying I think this would be good. Because there, there are some things about it. Like, I'm not saying that there's no talent involved here whatsoever. I'm just saying that there's, you know, there's too many questions raised by the people involved like some of them anyway so if you were to ask me if i think that this movie could have been good there's a slight possibility it could have been good despite its budget but i'm gonna go out on a limb and say it probably would have been terrible just like all of canon's other movies so shoot me if you want i'm sorry if people disagree with me i really apologize i'm trying to be unbiased i try to give movies a chance even if i think they sound terrible but like this one just has so much going against it that I, i'm not comfortable saying that i think for sure it would have been great you know what i mean i i hope you guys can understand Understand that. Um, but either way, if you did enjoy this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with all of your friends and all your various social media platforms. And speaking of social media, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Rinsler underscore productions, and I'll see all of you tomorrow in the next video.